OpenAI's new text-to-video product, Sora, actually shocked the entire industry. Nobody actually saw it coming and nothing will actually be the same. I can genuinely use all of the clickbaity titles that you all really dislike. Sora is incredible. I'm gonna show you a bunch of examples. I'm gonna explain how this has the potential to really change a lot of how media works today. And as a content creator, I'm both nervous and excited about it. And I'm gonna show you some of the best examples and funniest mistakes that I've found with it. So here's the blog post announcement from OpenAI creating video from text. Sora is an AI model that can create realistic and imaginative scenes from text instructions. And from all of the videos that I've seen about Sora, the thing that really sticks out to me is its ability to create one minute long videos with consistent objects throughout the entirety of the video. I've never seen anything like this before. Typically when you're looking at AI video, the objects within the video transform over the duration of the video or new objects get created out of nowhere. But but with Sora, I've seen some of the most incredible examples that I've ever seen. So here's an example. This is a woman walking down the street in Tokyo. Her hands look real. Her walking looks real. The scene behind her looks real. All of the signage in the background stays consistent throughout the entire video. When they finally zoom in to her face, you can see every little texture on her face. How the hair and the dress moves looks correct. It is extremely, extremely impressive. Here it says Sora is able to generate complex scenes with multiple characters, specific types of motion, and accurate details of the subject and background. The model understands not only what the user has asked for in the prompt, but also how those things exist in the physical world. A Chinese Lunar New Year celebration video with Chinese dragon. And every single person in it looks good. And as you can tell, as the dragon goes over people in the background, and then the people in the background are visible again, they don't change. And that is the most amazing part to me. Here's another example that really Really blew my mind more so than any other example that I've seen. So this is a scene of somebody from within a train holding a smartphone taking a video outside of the train and you can see the entire world with all of the buildings passing by thousands of buildings all consistent throughout the video and then when they go through a tunnel you can all of a sudden see the reflection of the person taking the video through the window and it looks flawless and I am so impressed by this just I can watch it over and over again because it seems to actually know that there's a person inside the train taking a video outside of the train, shows it briefly, and then goes back to showing what's outside the train again. Here's an example of a bunch of puppies playing around in the snow, and it is hyper detailed. The puppies look real. You can see all of the individual pieces of fur on the puppies. The snow looks great, everything. I'm going to show you some more great examples, and I'm also going to show you some funny looking and mesmerizing mistakes that Sora has made. So stick around for that. Sora doesn't actually have an understanding of the objects in the image. And that could be a benefit or a drawback. The benefit is that it's able to generate these incredible videos really inexpensively compared to something like Unreal Engine, which is extremely compute heavy because it has to understand every single detail, every single pixel in the video and it's computing where each pixel is going to go. And when you factor in things like textures and light and occlusion, that becomes very, very expensive. However, with this method, it's generating the end-to-end -end video and everything in the video all in one go. And it doesn't actually have an understanding of each individual object within the video. So let's talk about video games for a second. Take a look at this video. This is Minecraft, but it's not Minecraft. It was created by Sora. Everything looks flawless. So it is creating this environment dynamically for you. And not only that, but if you think about it, we can use large language models to generate the actual actions occurring and then use Sora to generate the video. So with both of those things, this could be the future of video games. Completely dynamic, built for one, with the story and the graphics both tailored to exactly what you want it to be. Look at this. This looks so real. It is something that looks like a Range Rover driving through the mountains. There's a bunch of trees around. It's on a dirt road. The dirt looks so real. This looks better than any video game I've ever played. Maybe the best performing video game might look something similar to this, but this is still better. And the thing is, the compute cost to run this video is exponentially less 
than it would be if we were using Unreal Engine. And OpenAI put out a technical report about how they were able to achieve these incredible results with Sora. And one that I wanna show is the difference in compute. The more that they scaled up compute, the better the results were. So there seems to be a very linear relationship between compute and quality. Here's the base compute on the left side. And as you can see, it does not look good. Everything's blurry. Nothing really makes sense. The puppy has multiple faces or no face at all. Here's one with four times compute and now it's starting to look better. We can actually tell the individual objects in the video. There's a person in the background, but still things look blurry, especially in the background. Now here's 32 times compute and this looks like 4K. This looks like perfect quality. Everything in the image looks good. The puppy, the hat, the fur, the grass, the snow, the trees blurred in the background, everything looks great. And Sora is using diffusion transformers. That is the tech it's using. Sora is a diffusion model given input noisy patches, that's what we're seeing on the left here, and conditioning information like text prompts. It's trained to predict the original clean patches, and that's what we're seeing on the right side. Importantly, Sora is a diffusion transformer. Transformers have demonstrated remarkable scaling properties across a variety of domains, including language modeling, computer vision, and image generation. And Sora can sample different sizes too. So here's a vertical video, here's a square video, and here's a wide video. It can do 1920 by 1080p and also vertical 1080 by 1920. And very similar to Dolly, it is translating your prompt into a very descriptive prompt using ChatGPT. So it's not just taking your prompt and putting that directly into Sora. Again, same way Dolly works. It's taking your prompt and trying to understand the intention of your prompt and translating that into a much better prompt. Let's take a look at a few more incredible examples. Here's one of a drone flying through the Colosseum and it's like a camera is behind the drone and everything within the Colosseum is extremely consistent. That is what sets Sora apart from anything I've seen before. And if I were Runway ML, I'd be a little nervous right now because this is better than anything I've seen them produce. And it's really the consistency that blows me away. And the way that they were able to do that is by calculating the entire duration of the one minute video all in one go, rather than trying to predict the next frame from the previous frame. And that allows all of the objects within the video to be really consistent. And now here's a very similar video, except the drone turns into a butterfly and the Colosseum turns into an underwater world. Really, really cool. But again, everything generated in this video is new compared to the other video. So it's not just changing the previous video, it's actually generating something new. And here's one of my favorites. This is an old Western California gold rush town that looks like it was filmed in the 1800s. And the potential for this to change movies and television and all media is enormous. I've been talking about having media catered to an audience of one for a while now, and this really shows what's gonna be possible. You can just describe the TV show that you wanna see and you will get it exactly how you want it. So this idea of having a central production company creating one product and serving it to lots of people, that might be a thing of the past soon. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Nero Studio. Nero Studio empowers users to transform text into compelling video in over 120 languages thanks to AI-driven capabilities. I've tested the platform myself and Nero Studio is packed with unique capabilities, starting with its very simple interface. Simply input your text and select a voice from over 140 languages and moods. And then Nero Studio does the rest. Create videos with authentic and relatable voices and emotions to engage audiences worldwide. And they even have this awesome whisper feature in which you can have avatars speak gently and smoothly. Use Nero Studio's pre-made avatars, voice conversation, lip sync, and so many more features, it goes on and on. So you can create user-generated videos to promote your brand and create both vertical and horizontal videos depending on where you wanna put that content. So product demos, business, just for fun, Nero does it all. From beginning beginners to seasoned creators. So check out Nero Studio. I'll drop a link in the description below along with the promo code Berman, which will give you 50% off any of Nero Studio's paid plans. So check it out. Thanks again to Nero Studio. Now back to the video. And Sora is also capable of generating images. So I don't know if they're thinking about this as a replacement for Dolly, but Sora is leaps and bounds better at videos than Dolly
actually is at images. But take a look at these Sora images. All four of these are created by Sora, not Dolly, and they look beautiful. But here's the super fascinating slash scary part. This could be the technology that brings us full circle with simulation theory. Let's take a look at what it says here. We find that video models exhibit a number of interesting emergent capabilities when trained at scale. These capabilities enable Sora to simulate some aspects of people, animals, and environments from the physical world. These properties emerge without any explicit induction biases for 3D objects, etc. They are purely phenomena of scale. So one, 3D consistency. Sora can generate videos with dynamic camera motion. As the camera shifts and rotates, people and scene elements move consistently through three-dimensional space. And again, it doesn't actually have an understanding of the individual objects in the 3D space, but it's able to generate consistent 3D objects in the space. And long-range coherence and object permanence, we've already talked about this. Look at this example right here. We have people walking in front of a window, which has a puppy leaning out of it. And as the people pass over it, completely blocking the puppy, the movement of the puppy in the background is consistent, even though you can't see it while it's moving. It also has a good understanding of interacting with the world. Sora can sometimes simulate actions that affect the state of the world in simple ways. For example, a painter can leave new strokes along a canvas that persist over time, or a man can eat a burger and leave bite marks. Look at how cool that is. And as I already mentioned, simulating digital worlds. This is probably the biggest potential in my mind. Video games can be created dynamically in real time, dependent on exactly what you do in the world. But it also makes mistakes, and it's not perfect. Check out this video right here. This is one where it shows a glass being picked up and the liquid falls through the glass incorrectly. One of the limitations is it does not accurately model the physics of many basic interactions like glass shattering. Other interactions like eating food do not always yield correct changes in object state. We enumerate other common failure modes of the model, such as incoherencies that develop in long durations samples or spontaneous appearances of objects. Now this was a huge problem for previous text to video models. This seems to be much less of a problem, but still a problem for Sora. Let's look at some of these examples. Now here's my favorite mistake video. This is a team of people pulling what looks to be plastic chairs out of the sand. The chair itself is moving by itself. And at the beginning of the video, there is no second chair. They pull out what looks to be sand that transforms into a chair. This other guy pulls a second piece off of the chair and seems to be just holding plastic. So everything is wrong about this video, but it is still mesmerizing to watch. It is really, really cool, but it is still capable of making mistakes. Here's another example of a very scary looking grandma blowing out candles, except when she goes to blow them out, nothing actually gets blown out. The candles are still there. But look at all the people in the background. They all look great. They're all very consistent. So it still looks really good. This could be a scary movie. Here's another example with some wolf puppies that seem to be getting generated out of nowhere. Their bodies start colliding. So definitely a lot of mistakes in this video. And here's another one of people relaxing at the beach when all of a sudden a shark jumps out at them. The shark's fin is not there. And then the shark's fin swims up to it. And then the lady's head performs a 180 and completely switches around looking at the camera. And that is terrifying. Also in the corner, the guy's foot or hand or something is kind of just hanging and waving there. Really, really odd and kind of gross, but funny to look at. So I'm gonna play a few more awesome examples of Sora video right now. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.